Welcome to the Mechanical Engineer. In this video, I am going to teach you the concept of resolution of forces. In general, the concept of resolution of forces is used to find out the resultant force if the system has more than two forces. So, we have seen parallelogram law is used to find out the resultant for two forces. If your system is having more than two forces, then you can use the concept of resolution of forces. So, in resolution of forces, the first thing we should do is If a force is acting with an inclination, for example, this force is acting with an inclination of theta. So, if it is acting like this, the first step we have to do is, we have to resolve this into two components. One is horizontal component and the another one is vertical component. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to convert this into two system of forces. So, one will be acting like this and the other one will be acting like this. Okay. So, this is called as Fh. If you consider this force as F. So, this is Fh. The inclination is given as theta and here it is Fv. So, two forces, Fh and Fv. So, now we should find out uh, the magnitude of each forces, Fh and Fv. So, for that, what I am going to do is, I am going to construct a triangle. So, in the triangle, this side represents the F, then the horizontal part represents the Fh and this vertical part represents the Fv. So, if we consider this as theta, if we take cos theta, we know that cos theta is equal to adjacent side by hypotenuse. So, it is Fh divided by F. Similarly, if we take sin theta, then sin theta is equal to opposite side. That is Fv divided by F. Further, the Fvh is equal to F into cos theta. Similarly, Fv is equal to F into sin theta. So, here the magnitudes Fh is F into cos theta. Similarly, the Fv is equal to F into sin theta. Okay. Now, if you know the magnitude F and the inclination theta, we can calculate both Fh and Fv. Now, let us consider a system of forces. I am constructing a quadrant. So, let us consider a force F1 here with an inclination of theta. Similarly, F2 here with theta. Then, I am considering a third force, F3 with theta. Similarly, a fourth force, F4 and theta. Okay, so here, here I have considered four forces. So, we know that the first thing we should do is, we should split these forces into two components. So, first focusing on the F1, I am going to split this into two components. So, I am converting it into Fh, that is F1H. Similarly, as the force is acting in the first quadrant, the F1H will be from left to right. So, you can see that. Then, the vertical force will be acting in the upward direction. So, this is f one V. Then if you come to F2, then F2 is acting in the second quadrant. So, the horizontal force will be acting from left to right. So, this is F2, H and vertical force will be acting in the downward direction. So, it is F2, V. Similarly, for F3, the horizontal force will be acting from right to left. So, F3, H and the vertical force will be acting in the downward direction. So, it is F3, B. Then moving to the F4, the horizontal component will be acting from right to left, that is F4H and the vertical component will be acting in the upward direction. So, that is F4V. So, you can easily visualize that. So, if a force is uh, moving in this direction, so, I mean in the F1 direction, the horizontal force will be from left to right and the vertical force will be from uh, down to up. So, this is actually the concept behind that. Okay, fine. Now, let us uh, calculate the magnitude and the direction. So, we know that the F1H is equal to F1 cos theta. Okay, so remember that if you take angle from the horizontal side, then the horizontal will be cos theta. If you take inclination from the vertical side, then the vertical side will be cos theta. So, if you don't want to get any confusion, so always prefer to take angle from the 
horizontal side so that you can write always the horizontal forces is equal to cos theta now moving to the f1 v so this is f1 sin theta then going to f2 the horizontal force is f2 cos theta make sure that you have taken the angle from the horizontal side then f2 v is equal to f2 sin theta similarly f3 v is f3 sin theta and f3 h is f3 cos theta now going to the f4 f4 cos theta is the horizontal component and f4 sin theta is the vertical component so now we have resolved everything uh, we can write the force equation now okay so let us write the summation of horizontal forces first so sigma h so starting from f1 so while writing the horizontal forces we should consider the direction i'm going to consider that the right side is positive in the horizontal and in the vertical the upward direction is positive so here in the f1 f1 h is acting in the right side so this is plus f1 cos theta then coming to the f2 f2 h is also acting in the positive side that is in the right side so plus f2 cos theta now moving to the f3 f3 is acting in the left side so the force is acting from right to left so it is minus f3 cos theta then moving to the f4 f4 is also acting in the negative side so this is minus f4 cos theta so these are the components of horizontal forces so in problem actually you will have the values for f and theta so you can calculate the horizontal component now moving to the vertical component sigma v so f1 is acting in the upward direction and we have seen that the upward direction is positive so it is plus f1 sin theta then f2 is acting in the downward direction so it is negative minus f2 sin theta then f3 is also acting in the negative direction so minus f3 sin theta and f4 is acting in the upward direction i mean f4 sin theta is acting in the upward direction so it is plus f4 sin theta so now we have calculated both the horizontal and vertical components now the equation for resultant is r is equal to root of summation of horizontal forces square plus summation of vertical forces square so if you know the magnitude of both horizontal and vertical forces you can calculate the resultant force now moving to the direction to find out the direction the equation is alpha is equal to tan inverse of summation of vertical forces divided by summation of horizontal forces so with this you can find out both the magnitude and direction of the resultant force now to mark the mag direction in the drawing so there is a concept if your sigma h is positive then that will be acting like this summation of h if the summation of v is negative that will be acting like this summation of v so in that case the resultant will be acting at the center and this is going to be the inclination maybe if your uh, summation of h is acting in the negative direction that will be acting like this because we know that in the horizontal side negative is the left side and if your vertical component is positive then that will be acting like this because in the vertical direction upwards is the positive direction so in this case the resultant will be acting at the center and this is going to be your r because we have taken r always from the horizontal directions and we, and we have also derived this equation based on these conditions only so based on the magnitude and direction of both the horizontal and vertical forces you can find out the resultant magnitude in and direction and also you can mark this in the diagram thank you